Today we're going to be doing the oil change on my 2018 Dodge Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. It's a 3 liter turbo diesel and it's a very easy process. Nice thing about the truck is you don't really need to have it up on ramps. There's enough clearance to get underneath and the oil filter is accessible from the top. So it's quite easy to do it yourself. Let me walk you through the steps. We're first going to take it for a little drive, let the engine warm up to temperature and it makes sure the oil is nice and warm and it'll flow nice and free. Let's go for a spin. If you're doing a straight oil change, you want to make sure you let it idle down after you drive it for about five minutes, just to let the turbo cool down a bit and then you can shut it off and perform the oil change. In this case here, I'm gonna shut the truck off right now. I've got another little trick I'm gonna do. This Ram has 144,000 kilometers on it, and since I'm changing over from the OEM recommended oil to AMS oil, I'm gonna run this uh, engine and transmission flush. So you can use it in a tranny or uh, in the engine. In this case here, we're gonna use it in the engine, and it's really easy to do. Um, it'll help clean up a lot of the deposits that are in the engine and most importantly I'm worried about turbo coking and that's when the turbo burns the oil like almost like butter in a frying pan so this is going to dissolve all that and uh, flush it out in the in the engine and it's really easy to use you can pop this cover right off if you want to get it out of the way we're going to take this whole bottle we're going to dump it <clears throat> into the oil fill area Now that the engine flush is in the oil, we're going to start and let the truck idle for 15 minutes and then we're going to do the oil change. Alright, so I made myself a fresh coffee and it's been 15 minutes, so we'll shut this thing down and we'll get right to it. I popped the key out of the ignition. I'm going to set the keys on the bench to avoid any accidental starts. Next, you'll need a big oil collection container, uh, an oil pan, you can get them at Amazon. and. Uh, and a 13 millimeter socket to crack the bolt loose. So have your oil container ready. Rubber gloves is nice. This is going to be pretty warm oil when it comes out. But you'll see the oil drain plug is a 13 mil just behind the front uh, brace here. And you'll see these cooling lines running along the, uh, the back of the oil pan here. But uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So le lefty loosey, make sure you check your ratchet before you put it on. Uh, we're going to stick it up on here and we're going to crack this thing loose. Once it's loose, you can spin this thing out. And I'm putting a little bit of upward pressure on it so it doesn't leak all over the place. And then when I feel that the, the drain plug is going to come out, I'll just quickly, like a ninja, pull it out of the way. But we're going to let this drain for 45 minutes. There's a lot of nooks and crannies up in there that uh, that we want to make sure that we uh, we cover out. As we let that oil drain out completely, we're going we're gonna to remove the oil fill cap, just keep some more air in the systems, it might help it flow better, and then we'll address the oil filter right now as well. From the oil fill cap you just kind of go down and you see this plastic thing right there and you see it's got a big plastic hex nut fitting on the top i believe that's an inch and a sixteenth i'm just going to use an adjustable it's not in there very tight It's a cartridge filter, so no oil is going to leak out. You can hear it kind of gurgling down. And that's your oil filter right there. The filter clicks into place in here. You just kind of, you can see it's spinning here. 
but if you actually just pop it, it'll pop out just like that. So we're going to dispose of that properly and then we're going to clean this out with a rag and then we're going to wipe out the cavity on the truck as well with a with a shop towel. There's also a rubber o-ring on here we want to pick off because the new filter does come with an o-ring. Using a Wix uh, WL1060, uh, you can also get that uh, from Amsoil on the link uh, in the description. Did some research, a lot of guys having really good success with this filter. They're kind of funny because they're, they're so cheap. You know, even the dealer ones that you pay like 60 or 70 bucks for, they're just cheap, you know. So I can't see that this performing any worse like I said, a lot of good reviews online with this wick, so I'm going to use it. Just take a little bit of oil from, you know, the rag here or your, your cleanup and lubricate that O-ring. And then it's going to slide down on the, uh, on the filter. Not here. It's got to go in that groove. You'll see the groove, the bottom groove here. It's going to slide into the groove like that. There's your O-ring. And then this filter, you're going to press in here until it clicks. And it should spin once it's in place. You have a little O-ring here, which will put a little bit of light oil on it. And uh, this is ready to go back on the truck. Let's clean the cavity out where it, where it finds its home. You can see there's still lots of oil in there. Doesn't take much to dab it out, though. Be careful not to knock any dirt or gunk from the hoses or surrounding engine in that hole. Now we can reinstall the oil filter. And do this by hand because it is just plastic and you want to make sure it threads in easy. You're not cross threading it. Thread her down until she's tight and then I'm going to use a, uh, there's a torque spec on this but honestly, if you hand tighten it, if you're stronger than I am, it should be good. I'm going to make sure that seats and then I'm just going to use the adjustable just to crack it a little bit more. It'll be good. You don't want to over tighten that thing, you'll strip it. Oil's still draining out like a bandit down there. Let's check the, uh, the air filter and other fluids up here. Windshield washer fluid, all that good stuff. The air filter's right here and has little metal snaps on it. Just pop the snaps out. Should tip out of the way. And you'll see it here. This one's pretty dirty. I mean, it's nowhere near as what the, uh, what the dealership will show you. Hey, Mr. Porter. Yeah, that's me. We had a look at your air filter and it's a little dirty like that. Would you like us to put a new one in for $400? Oh, thanks. And uh, look at that thing of beauty. So we'll just pop this back in here. If there's any leaves or whatever in there, white, clean them out, but it looked pretty good. There's, there's tabs that go through little holes in the back. And then the front is just hinged on and it clips. That puts us to about 45 minutes, which is perfect for draining the oil in this thing. So I'm just going to clean up this surface area and then we're going to put that drain plug back in. Make sure it's clean. This is the drain plug. O-ring looks good on it and we're going to uh, crawl underneath there and fire this thing back in. All right, so it's been over an hour that this has been dripping. So we're just going to wipe up the surface here. There is a torque spec on this, but it is only a 13 millimeter bolt, so just tighten it up. It's going into aluminum. There, that'll do it. 
And we're gonna wipe it up good so that if it is dripping, we can see it once we do the initial run. I'll leave the oil pan under the truck and I'll just back the truck up out of the way when it's done and clean it all up so it doesn't uh, spill as I'm moving it. You can see it's almost right full. And uh, make sure you have plenty of room there. All right, what we're using today is the AMS oil uh, diesel oil. When I start towing the sleds in the fall, I'm gonna start running the max duty uh, extreme oil. Before you start yelling, hey Kool-Aid. Oh yeah, hey Kool-Aid! Oh yeah, here comes Kool-Aid. Just think about it. AMS oil is the name behind every power sports event out there. Snowcross, the ATV, snowmobile, motorcycle shows, Lots of racing experience and heritage. And they even supported my lodge sessions with a happy hour for you guys. Not to mention it's better oil. The manufacturer recommends the minimum standards for oil. This stuff here will save me money, and it, but it's four times the protection that the Detroit diesel standards have for oil. Stuff the minimum standards, this stuff blows it out of the water. It's good oil. So what we've got here is we need 10 liters of oil, 10.46 quarts it needs. Uh, what we've got here is uh, 9.4 liters, and then I bought another liter jug. So the nice thing about AMS oil, it's convenient, order online. And you know what? If you become a preferred customer, use the link. I'll post it in the comments and in the description of this video. For like a $15 six month membership, you get 25% off. It's a good deal. If you sign up, thank you so much. I signed up as an independent Amazon dealer. I'm gonna be buying a lot of this stuff. I have a lot of friends and fans that wanna buy it as well. You know, if you wanna become a preferred customer or buy through my, my link, I really appreciate it. But for now, this is great oil. It's gonna save me money, saves me time. And because it's better protection than the OEM recommended oil, this truck's going to last longer. It's a win-win, I see. It's 5W40 that we're using in this. And I've been looking a lot online for, for fuel additives to help me get better mileage and uh, to make the truck last a bit longer. And the Amsoil Diesel Injector Clean is, is definitely one that is uh, high on the list. And there's also a Cetane Boost, which I'm going to run in the winter as well. I'm going to pour this bottle in next fill up. Uh, which should be later today. And if you actually uh, become, become a preferred customer, there's all kinds of uh, offers. Like right now, there's the uh, free metal protection spray uh, with your purchase. Um, there's free shipping all the time. There is magnetic parts trays. There's been hats, uh, all kinds of stuff. Whatever the current promotion is for you guys, I'll put it out there as well. All right, we'll slap a funnel up in there. We've got the... Oil filter in and tight. We've got the oil drain plug in and tight. The nice thing about the Ram is you can get right up in here and get, get, get busy with it. I always hold these jugs sideways. You can see how I'm holding it here. And it helps with the, uh, so it doesn't glug out all at once. So just gently pour it in. Look at that. Golden goodness. Pour it slow. I mean, it'll pour fast as you want to go. But I don't want that funnel to overflow or anything like that. So this is 9.46 liters. So on the smaller bottle, we want to run 540 milliliters in the uh, from this jug. So just over half of it. And that should pretty much do it. We'll start it up, we'll let it idle, let the oil go through the filter area and everything like that, and then we will uh, check the oil. We'll let this idle for a minute or so, shut it down, let it rest, and then check the oil level. Set it right in place. There's two small dots on there. I don't know whether you'll be able to see them, but that looks like it's uh, it's pretty much there. We'll check it when it completely cools down and rests, and if we need to 
add a touch more, we will, but uh, let's check for leaks and we'll reset the dash alert. Now we can throw our clean cover on. There's two clips on the back that it snaps into. And then once they're in place, it'll actually just push right down in like that. To reset the dash, we're going to actually uh, scroll through the menu until we hit the oil change interval. And then you're just going to uh, hold the right arrow on the steering wheel to reset it. Engine must be off with the ignition in run. So there are the engines in run. It's off. And then once you're in there, you're going to hold the right arrow to reset it. Confirm reset. You can cancel the reset or scroll down, hit OK, and then press the right arrow to confirm that. And there you go. Now it says zero kilometers since your last change. 100% oil. We're ready to rock. That's how I do my oil changes in my Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. Hopefully the video helped you. If you want to find links to the oil and filters I've used in this video, expand the description or look in the comments below. I'll also post any of the current AMSOIL specials as the first comment in the list. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button if this helped you. And if you want to see more conversion from regular OEM oil to AMSOIL, by all means, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out to me on Mudbrats, Snowbrats, Instagram or Facebook and leave a message there uh, or mudbrats.com website and I'll uh, do my best to help you out. Lots of good stuff from Amsoil. Synthetic grease. Uh, water resistant, that's going to be used for the boat. Got some gasoline cleaning additive. Used to run Startron, but now I'm going to run this. This is Quick Shot. It's a stabilizer and also eliminates the ethanol problems in a lot of today's fuels. Interceptor oil, I've been running a lot. I've run it in the sled, I've run it in the bike. It's an amazing oil. And uh, what really turned me on to Amsoil is Rob the Oil Guy sent me a sample of this Sabre 100 to 1. And I've been running it in my power equipment, in my leaf blower, my chainsaw, my, my whipper snipper, and uh, 100 to 1 oil. You hardly use any, and the things run mint. So looking forward to being part of the big Amsoil family, and I hope you will too.